So in this video we're going to show you how to create a simple shutter effect like this one. So we're going to go to Sketchfab and we're going to download a random car uh, from here and then click download FPX and then in Blender uh, we're, going to, we're going to import the FPX file. Okay, uh, and now we're going to delete the plane and then we're going to click on the windows and then we're going to click on tab or uh, go to the edit mode and then what we're going to do is that we need to separate each window so we're going to click on face edges and then we're going to drag with our mouse right click and then separate by selection so this is how we separate each window by its own so we're gonna do the same steps click drag right click and then separate shift drag and then here shift drag right click separate drag with the mouse shift drag right click separate so each window now is separated by its own. We're gonna go again to the edit mode and then we're gonna click on this window, the vertices. We're gonna go to edges and then we're going to subdivide. So now we have more vertices. To create a better effect when we uh, shatter the window into pieces so the object itself must have a good amount of vertices this one for example no need to subdivide it as it's already have enough vertices Another important thing we need to do is that we need to right click on the object and set origin to geometry. We're going to do the same thing to each window. Now we're going to export the object. And then in our Unity, we're going to import the FBX file. Here we need to check the read and write field and then hit apply. Okay. Because we need to modify the vertices of the game object. So now we're going to drag and drop the car in, these, in our scene. And here we're just adjusting the position and the rotation and scaling it. Okay, now uh, here I'm just uh, drag and drop the texture folder. Then we're gonna unpack the prefab and then we're gonna drag and drop the material, the texture material and then we're gonna assign the normal and also we're gonna, let's fix it and then we're gonna assign the metallic and then we're gonna click on all the objects shift click and then assign all the materials okay so now we're going to drag and drop uh, the script 
responsible for shattering the game objects. So in the script we have uh, two audio variables, the audio clip glass and the audio source. In the glass settings header we have uh, three variables, the triangle size, the explosion force and the number of triangles. And then here we have a private uh, boolean uh, variable. So the on mouse down is called uh, when we when the mouse button is pressed on the object, it's then gonna call the apply shatter method. So the apply shatter, uh, it checks if is shattered is not true and then we're gonna play the shatter sound effect by assigning the clip to the audio source and playing it and then we're gonna call the shatter mesh uh, method inside it we have two parameters the explosion force and the triangle size and then we're gonna set uh, is shatter to true to make sure that the uh, the shatter effect is called uh, once the shatter mesh method is responsible for shattering the mesh of the game object into multiple pieces so we start by getting the mesh filter and the collider component uh, and then we disable the collider to prevent any further interaction with the shattered object and then we retrieve the mesh and the renderer of the game object uh, and then we retrieve an array of materials uh, that are used by the renderer and if the renderer is null uh, we will assign an empty array and then here we are extracting mesh data, the vertex position, the normals, and the UV coordinates from the mesh. And then we are creating an integer, uh, created triangles, to keep track of uh, how many created triangles are there. And then we initialize it to zero. And then here we are iterating through each submesh of the object's mesh. And for each submesh we retrieve the triangle indices. And then we iterate over the triangles of the current submesh. Here we check if the created triangles is greater or equal the number of triangles. If yes, then we break out of the loop. Otherwise, we create a new triangle by creating uh, new vertices, normals, and UV coordinates. So whenever you want to create a triangle, these three attributes are important to form uh, a triangle. And then here another for loop to iterate over the vertex of the triangle. So here we are retrieving the index of the vertex. The variable i represents the starter index of the current triangle in the indices array. And n variable iterate over the, over the three vertices of the triangle. Here is a random uh, offset uh, that is generated for each vertex. This offset is added to the original vertex position. And then here we modify uh, the vertex position by adding the random offset and scaling it by the triangle size, multiplying it by the triangle size. And here we are assigning the UV coordinates to the shattered pieces. Uh, and the same thing here we are assigning the normals of the original vertex to the shattered pieces. And then here we are creating a new mesh object and assigning the vertices, normals, and UV coordinates and triangle indices. And then we create a new game object for each shattered piece and we name it piece. And then we set the, uh, its parent to the original object. And then we set the position and the rotation the same as the original game object. And then we assign the appropriate material and mesh. And then we add a box collider. And then here we are calculating a random position uh, within a range around uh, the original's object position. Thus adding uh, a random generated value between uh, minus 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. And then here we are adding a rigid body to the shattered pieces. And the add explosion force apply, apply a force. Where here we generate a random force magnitude between 300 and 400 and the explosion position and the explosion force which determines the strength of the force. And then we increment the created triangles by one. And outside the for loop uh, we disable the renderer of the main game object after we split it. Okay, now we're going to attach the script to the window game object and then we're gonna attach the audio source and then drag and drop the audio source in the this field and then the, we have an audio clip the glass break we're gonna assign it and then here we're gonna change it to 20 and then we're gonna change the explosion force and the triangle size to my preferred values 
and then here we're gonna uh, also add a box collider okay and now we're going to uh, copy the component and then paste it in here another game object and we're gonna do the same steps audio source uh, box collider and then assign the correct values the audio source yes and then in the main camera we're gonna align it to view also make sure we have an audio listener As you can see it broke down into triangle pieces here as you can see in the ground these are a bunch of triangles that represent the pieces and then here I'm testing uh, on a 3d basic cube object and then uh, we're gonna assign the shatter script to it Let's test it out. As you can see, it broke down into a bunch of triangles. Another thing I want to clarify is that if you if you went if you went to the mesh cube object, you can see here uh, the maximum triangles the object has. So the maximum triangles are twelve. So it cannot broke down into more than twelve triangles, even if we here specify. So for example, here I put twenty. But it does not, it's not gonna break into 20 exactly, it's just gonna reach the maximum. So now let's, for example, put 2 and see. As you can see, it's broken down into two pieces. Here also, we can uh, check the maximum triangles of the window game object by going into the mesh and then here as you can see it says 16 triangles so the maximum we can reach is 16 